Hello everybody, Mr. Taylor. Uh, let's take a look at, again, Unit 5 and uh, Lesson 12.3 and try to get some clear understanding of these properties of rotation. Uh, we're just going to really, in this video, take a look at Explorer Activity Number 1, uh, which is Exploring the Rotation. And again, uh, we are required to describe the properties of orientation and uh, congruency of rotation. So, um, key things that we need to remember, orientation means the, the vertices will change from one position to an, another position as we rotate. Uh, rotation itself is a transformation that turns a figure around a given point. Uh, this is what this uh, actual um, our orientation is going to be centered around and the center of orientation is the point that uh, the transformation turns. Um, a rotation again is a transformation that turns a figure around a given point called a center of rotation and this image has the same uh, size and shape as the pre-image. You know somewhat looking at at these windmills, um, that's, I know there's some in Texas, I've seen some in uh, California if you ever take a trip and drive um, to uh, Los Angeles. And these windmills are here, you'll see some right outside of Fort Worth and then also some uh, when you get to, uh, but these things depending on how they turn, even though they they are, if you in a, in a good day they're the same, but then as they turn uh, the actual position uh, will be different. Now, you know, hopefully you can you can see this part. I don't want to do that. Hopefully you can see this part because I gave you this earlier when we started uh, in, in the definition paper video if you might want to go back and look at this but this is pretty much formulas that we're going to use when we're dealing with rotation so especially if it's rotated about the origin and and I, I, I want to say this that from my knowledge on your on your test uh, your state test that you will be looking at um, a transformation that a, that is rotated about zero zero. That means a point will be there, and you'll just move the figure either uh, counterclockwise or move the figure either clockwise, and one that one point will stay right at zero zero. So if you can just really get this part where it says if you rotate uh, 90, 90 degrees clockwise, so that means you if you're sitting here. And you're going to go, uh, if you're in, let's say, maybe, um, let's, let's, let's see, can we put this here? Because I want you to get fully get a full effect. I may have to. Um, so, if we're looking at, this is quad one, this is quad two, this is quad three, and this is quad four. And if you, if you, if you, uh, let's just say that you have a point here, and this figure is here. Uh, if you're gonna rotate this figure ninety degrees counterclockwise, then it's gonna move from here over here. And if you're gonna rotate this figure. 90 degrees from here clockwise then it's going to move to this quadrant so every time you move and if you're going to go 180 degrees counterclockwise from here you will go one two uh, quadrants and if you were going to go 270 from here then you would go one two three quadrants and if you're going to do 360 you go one, two, three, and back around here to four. So this is what our little formula here tells us, but we want to make sure that we get 
a, a pretty pretty decent understanding of what uh, what this means when it says that if you're going to rotate about zero zero ninety degrees clockwise, then you will uh, your y becomes your x, and whatever x is, you will use the opposite of that. And if you're going to rotate around the origin 90 degrees counterclockwise, your Y becomes your X, and you use the opposite of Y. Now that's we got to keep this in mind. We're talking about the opposites. And uh, and if you're going to rotate uh, about the origin 180 degrees, your X and Y remains, but you use the opposite of X and the opposite of Y. All right, let's try and see, can we get into this and see exactly what um, what this is doing. Okay, so here it also tells us that this triangle is shown on a grid, uh, uh, triangle ABC, and it's, uh, it's the pre-image. Uh, and it said you will use the origin, so notice that, uh, that A is located at 0, 0. And you will use the origin uh, to uh, as your center of rotation. So that means A will not move, will not move, and you will rotate it either clockwise or counterclockwise or whatever. So they're asking you to take your tracing paper and trace the triangle, cut out the trace triangle, and then rotate it 90 degrees. So if you're in quadrant one, they're expecting for you to bring this over here to quadrant two. And you're going to be bringing C. What happens is C comes over to quadrant two and B raises up. If you can sort of see that. Then it says sketching and labeling uh, A, B, C as A prime, B prime, and C prime. Uh, describe the motion uh, by the rotation and talk about rotating A, B, and C. Again, I put this formula on this page for you so you can see exactly what you're doing. Just go ahead and stop it, write these instructions down and see what would you come up with once, once I get back and, and show you. Then it asks you from a reflection standpoint, uh, how is the size and orientation of the triangle affected by the rotation? So how did your size, did you, were your size affected? Think about what it said in the, in the, in the definition. And also, was your orientation affected? So those are two questions that you're going to have to answer. And then number two says, you want to rotate triangle ABC uh, 90 degrees clockwise about the origin and sketch the result of the uh, coordinate grid above. Uh, label this A uh, double prime, B double prime, C double prime. And again, we left the uh, actual... Um, actual formulas here for you. Okay. Let's see what, what they what they asked us to do. Well, first of all, they said let's go from here to here. So here's something I want you to notice. The point for C. We're looking at one, two, so this ordered pair is two, comma and we're taking it 1, 2, 3, 4. So this ordered pair is 2, 4. Now, it tells us that if we're going to uh, rotate it counterclockwise, that means we're going to go to our left. So 90 degrees means we're going to leave out of quadrant 1, and we're going to go into quadrant 2. 90 degrees. So now, if that's the case, we know that A is going to stay still, and we're going to lay this, instead of C being up, C is going to wind up now, instead of going straight up, C is going to be going to our to its left. But let's see, do this formula work, work for here. If we took C, like the arrow said, and turned C down, then what do we see about C? We see... Um, well, 2, 4, so it says 90 degrees counterclockwise, we should have a negative y comma x. So, if we look at the negative y, if we look at y, it is 4. 
So it goes first, but it says a negative y. So now C point should be a negative 4. And it says x becomes y, x points become y, which is a positive 2. So it stays comma 2. And if you notice, that's exactly what we have, a negative 4, 2. And we, we do for B, now the thing would be, you're probably saying, well, wh what's going to happen to B? Well, let's, ta let's take a look. B, if this is going to lay down from here, where is B? B becomes, this is 2, comma, 0. So let's, let's put it here. This is 2, comma, 0. And if B is going to be rotated, then B becomes 0. That can't be a negative 0, right? And then the X value is 2. So it becomes, right here, it becomes 0, comma, 2. Notice the, the x's and the y's, the point shift. And then you just literally draw your nines to connect. Okay, now describe the motion uh, modeled by the rotation. Uh, well, we rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin. That's exactly what they told us in the instruction. And it says, check the motion you described in D. Uh, check that the motion you described in D is the same motion. Uh, maps point A onto A prime, B onto B prime, and C onto C prime. Okay, so that's, that's exactly right. We still, according to what I just found out using this particular set of formulas, that they do map. And... So it says, well, how's the size of the orientation? How are the size and the orientation of the triangle affected? Well, if you notice, this triangle stays the same. Well, how do you know, Mr. Taylor? Well, let's see. If I look from A to B, there's one, two points. If I look from A prime to B prime, there's two units. If I look from B to C, there's one, two, three, four units. And if I look from B prime to C prime, there's one, two, three, four. So, it literally, the size of the triangle didn't change at all. Okay? What did change is the orientation. And notice what it said. That the triangle is turned or tilted left. What was up, now the triangle turns to the left. Now it asks us for number two to rotate it. It says here, take this and rotate it. Uh, 90 degrees clockwise about the origin uh, and then sketch this one. So if we're going to rotate it 90 degrees about the origin, I'm going to try to do this without messing it up. So A stays here. Look what B does. B, so 90 degrees clockwise. It says, uh, so we said that's 2, 0. So that becomes Y. So 2 becomes your, your Y, which is 0. There it is. And 2 becomes your x, but notice that x is negative because that's what it says right here. That's what it says right here. So here, this 2, 0 becomes 0, comma, negative 2. That's your b. And then your c, uh, well, does it, does it fall as well? Well, let's see. It's going from 2, 4, so we're going to change with y, x. So uh, the 4... It becomes y, notice it's positive, and the x, which is uh, 2, becomes the y part, and it's negative. So in plain words, this thing just laid down just like that. Okay? Let's uh, see what else it has for us. Uh, it just take a little, little practice, practice on it. Uh, so again, uh, here's that reflect, the same thing that I just did. I think I did it here and then sort of somewhat covered it up for you. Uh, so here, uh, this is exactly a clear photo of what's happening. 
without the covering up. Again, you can take it and trace it, but I definitely want you to get familiar with this down here. Definitely get familiar with uh, this part right here, please. All right, I'll talk to you soon.